This is a peach tomato and it has a fuzzy skin on it and it also has a blushing like a peach. Now I'm going to taste it. Let's see. Super juicy. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's like good though. Pouring it's out. It's not really there. acidic at all. Try it. Or taste acidic. Oh my gosh, I think it's juicy. I didn't expect it to wow, it's super juicy. erupt. That's a lot more acidic than a than our normal yellow tomato though. Yeah. But compared to a red, it's like super mild. Ooh, this is a good sauce tomato. Yeah. That's gonna that has a lot of flavor actually. I'm definitely gonna grow these again. I didn't like these at first, but now they're really now that it's the heat has turned up They're really cranking out right now Those are good. Interesting so There you have it peach tomato milk and honey acreage approved Okay, let's preserve some tomatoes I start off by removing the core from the top a little bit because it's really hard and then I just slit an X on the bottom of my tomatoes. I've got some water boiling and my jars are already in my oven at 225 degrees for 20 minutes but again I leave those in there until I use them. So we're going to flash boil these um, just for a couple minutes and so that we could peel that skin off really easily. Once you see the skin pulling apart and kind of curling up, then you can remove them from the boiling water and start to peel them. And I just peel them while they're hot. I kind of just hold them on a spoon and peel them. And it comes off really easily. This is the best way to peel fruit. Uh, I do my peaches the same exact way. You don't want to keep them boiling in the water for too long or you'll end up with some really mushy stewed tomatoes, which is totally fine too. You could still can them, but it's gonna make it a lot harder to get the skin off. And you can can your tomatoes without peeling the skin, depending on what you're gonna do with them. If I'm making salsa, I don't even bother peeling them. So now I'm just putting it on a little spoon here and I'm peeling it off. And these are still hot. You can wait for them to cool if you want to. I'm just impatient and I like to do it while it's still hot because I'm gonna jar these up right away. Normally I would put these in their hole, but some of these are too big to fit through the opening of the jar. Um, so I just cut them in half. And when I pack these in, I cram them in there. I'm not worried about smashing these because these are most likely gonna be used for making sauces later on anyway. So I really cram them in there. As you cram them in there, you'll notice that they will uh, it'll make a lot of juice and it'll be enough juice to cover the tomatoes so you really won't have to pour very much brine in here. You want to fill these jars up just to that first ridge and then you can backfill it with uh, some water if you need to or there might be enough juice like mine has enough juice to leave about a half of an inch of headspace up at the top. Just make sure that if you are going to add water to this that it's boiling hot water. You're also going to take a skinny spatula or a chopstick to um, wedge between the jar and the fruit and you're going to kind of squeeze the fruit in there to get any air bubbles that might be trapped in between the fruit. Now normally I would do this step before I pack it but I kind of forgot. I'm adding a half teaspoon of citric acid because these are quart jars. If these were pint jars I would only add a quarter teaspoon of citric acid. And this is going to help kill off any bacteria that might form in the jar and help preserve the fruit. And this is, I like to put it in the jar instead of in the mixture. Like if I cooked all my tomatoes in a pot and then poured it in because it just gives me peace of, mind that, peace of mind that I've got the exact amount that I need in there. And then I also added a quarter teaspoon of salt and two to three cloves of garlic. Make sure to wipe your rim on your jar before you put the lids on. I'm just removing my lids from some boiling water and we're going to put that top on and screw the ring on finger tight. And finger tight just means as tight as your fingertips will go. You're not gonna crank it on there. Now I'm starting my second jar and I'm making sure to add the citric acid and the canning salt um, ahead of time. And again, you always wanna use canning salt when you're canning because if you use table salt or iodized salt, you're gonna get a really cloudy liquid in your canning. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really gross, just trust me. Always use canning salt or sea salt or some kind of purified salt. 
This is my last jar, so I have fewer tomatoes in this jar, so I am adding some boiling water to my jar. And again, don't forget to um, use a spatula to get between there and release any air bubbles, especially if you're using less tomatoes and you're having to add water because there is gonna be air trapped in there and you don't want that. Again, we want about a half inch of headspace up at the top, so I'm just gonna fill this up a little bit more with some boiling water. Now I'm gonna put these in a water bath for 40 to 45 minutes, and you wanna make sure that the water is at least an inch above the top lids of your jars. So the water volume needs to be an inch above your jars. When you pull these out, you're gonna let them sit for 24 hours so that they could seal, and you'll know they're sealed because that little dimple on the lid will be inverted. Here are my tomatoes all done. I also did cherry tomatoes using the same method, except for I just put them in whole and I didn't peel them. But I did make sure to um, blanch them first in some boiling water for a couple minutes. And that's just something I always do when I can whole cherry tomatoes. I also canned a jar of my white tomatoes and I've got one orange one up at the top and I just wanted to put these all in one jar because I kind of wanted to see if there was a flavor difference. So I've, I had a little bit of extra room in there. Don't worry if you see um, like pulp or stuff floating around in your liquid. It doesn't have to be pretty. These are just like stewed tomatoes. So you're gonna end up blending these up or mashing them up into something anyway. So it doesn't have to look like a perfect tomato in there, even with your cherry tomatoes. All right guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you try out making some quick tomato preserves to use later. Um, sometimes, in this one I actually added some peppers, kind of like a rotel, so I can make my cherry tomatoes in a salsa later. Um, but anyway, this was just a quick way to preserve your tomatoes if you needed to get some out of the way. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.